let's do it. Okay. 100%. Are you sure? Oh, oh, yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to No Beard Shakespeare's production of Macbeth. Oh, uh, places, actors. Oh, I'm so slow. Macbeth. Act one, scene one. Thunder and lightning. Enter three witches. When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? When the hurly-burly's done, when the battle's lost and won. That will be ere the set of sun. Where the place? Upon the heath. There to meet with Macbeth? Hmm. Fair, fair is foul. And foul, foul is, is fair. Father. Through the fog and filthy Act one, scene two. Alarm within. Enter King Duncan and Malcolm, who come across Ross, weary and bruised from the battlefields. The worthy thane of Ross. What a haste looks through his eyes. Mm. Hail, brave friend. Say to the king the knowledge of the broil as thou didst leave it. Doubtful it stood, the merciless MacDonawald, with fortune on his damned quarrel smiling, showed like a rebel's whore, but all's too weak for brave Macbeth. Well, he deserves that name, disdaining fortune with his brandished steel, like valor's minion carved out his passage and fixed his head upon our battlements. Oh, valiant cousins, worthy gentlemen, but from that spring, whence comfort seemed to come, discomfort swells. Mark, King of Scotland, Mark, no sooner justice had, with valor alarm armed, compelled these skipping kerns to trust their heels. But the Norwegian lord, surveying vantage, with furbished arms and new supplies of men, began a fresh assault with terrible numbers, assisted by that traitor, Thane of Cawdor. Dismay, not this our captains, Macbeth and Benquo. If I say sooth, I must report they were, as cannons, overcharged with double cracks. So they doubly redoubled strokes upon the foe. Then Macbeth did curb his lavish spirit, and to conclude, the victory fell on us. <gasps> Great happiness! No more that thane of Cawdor shall deceive our bosom interest. Go! pronounce his present death, and with his former title, greet Macbeth. I'll see it done. What he hath lost, Macbeth hath won. Act one, scene three, thunder, enter three witches. Where hast thou been, sister? Killing swine. <laughs> sister, where thou? A sailor's wife had chestnuts in her lap and munched and munched and munched. Give me, quoth I. A right thee, witch, the rump fed runyon cries. Her husband's to Aleppo gone, master of the tiger. But in a sieve, I'll thither sail and like a rat without a tail, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do. I'll give thee a wind. And I another. Well, thou art kind. He shall live like a man forbid. Macbeth <laughs> <laughs> doth come. The weird sisters, hand in hand, posters of the sea and land. Thus do go about, about, thrice to thine and thrice to mine. And thrice again to make up nine peace, the charms wound up. Oh, so foul and fair I have not seen. How far is it, Forrest? What are these? So withered and so wild in their attire that look not like the inhabitants of the earth and yet are on it? Live you or are you aught that man may question? You seem to understand me. Speak if you can, what are you? 
All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Gloms. All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Cawdor. All hail, Macbeth. That shalt be king hereafter. Good sir, why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? At the name of the truth, are you fantastical or is that indeed which outwardly you show? My noble partner, you greet with present and great prediction of noble having a royal hope. What he seems wrapped with all, to me you speak not. If you could look into the seeds of time, speak then to me who neither beg nor fear your favors or your hate. Hail. 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 Lesser than Macbeth and greater. Not so happy, yet much happier. Thou shalt get kings, thou be none. So all hail Macbeth and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth. Banquo. All hail. Stay, you imperfect speakers, tell me more. By Sinul's death, I, I know I am Thane of Gloms. But how of Cawdor? The Thane of Cawdor lives. A prosperous gentleman and to be king stands not within the prospect of belief. No more than to be Cawdor. Say from whence thou owe this strange intelligence or why upon this blasted heath you, you stop our way with such prophetic greeting. Speak, I charge you. Whither are they vanished? Would they have stayed? Were such things here as we do speak about, or have we eaten on the insane root that takes the reason prisoner? Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. <laughs> Thane of God or two. When it not so? To the selfsame tune and words. Who's here? Of uh, the king halfly, hath happily received, Macbeth, the news of thy success, and I am sent to give thee from our royal master thanks. He bade me from him call the Thane of Cawdor, in which addition, hail, most worthy Thane, for it is thine. What, can the devil speak true? The, the Thane of Cawdor lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the Thane lives yet, but under heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose, whether he was combined with those of Norway or did line the rebel with Help, hidden help and vantage, or that with both he labored in his country's rack, I know not. But treason's capital, confessed and proved, have overthrown him. Gloms and Thane of Cawdor, greatest is behind. Thanks for your pains. Uh, do you not hope your children shall be kings? When thou that gave the Thane of Cawdor to me, promise no less to them. That trusted home might yet enkindle you unto the crown. Besides the Thane of Cawdor, but tis strange, the instruments of darkness tell us truths. Win us with honest trifles to betray the deepest consequence. Cousin, a word, I pray you. Two truths are told as happy prologues to the swelling act of the imperial theme Supernatural soliciting cannot be ill, cannot be good. If ill, why hath it given me earnest of success, commencing in a truth? I am Thane of Cawdor. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs? My thought whose murderer yet is but fantastical, shakes so my single state of man. If chance will have me king, why chance may crown me without my stir? New honors come upon him, like our strange garments cleave not to their mold, but with the aid of use. Come what come may, Time and the hour runs through the roughest day. Were they make bath, we stay upon your leisure. Ah, uh, give me your favor. My dull brain was wrought with things forgot. 
Uh, kind gentlemen, your pains are registered where every day I turn the leaf to read them. <sighs> Let us towards the king. Think upon what hath chanced, and at more time, the interim having weighed it, let us speak our free hearts each to other. Very gladly. So then, enough. Come, friends. Act one, scene four. Flourish. Enter King, Lennox, Malcolm, and attendants. Is execution done on Fodor? Are those in commission yet returned? Father, they are not yet come back, but I have spoke with one of them that saw him die, who did report that very frankly he confessed his treasons, implored your highness's pardon, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing in his life came him like the leaving it. He died as one that had been studied in his death. To throw away the dearest thing he owed, as to a care careless trifle. There's no art to find in the mind's construction in the face. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust. Oh, worthiest cousin, the sin of my ingratitude even now was heavy on me, more is due upon the than paid. The service and the loyalty I owe in doing is <laughs> pays itself. Your Highness's part is to receive our duties and our duties, which do but what they should by doing everything safe towards your love and honor. Welcome hither. I have begun to plant thee and will labor to make the full of growing. Noble Benquo, that has no less deserved, nor must be known, no less to have done so, let us enfold thee and hold thee to our hearts. There, if I grow, the harvest is your own. Sons, kinsmen, thanes, and you whose places are the nearest know, we will establish our estate upon our only Malcolm, whom we name hereafter the Prince of Cumberland, which honor must not unaccompanied invest in him only. The signs of nobleness like stars shall, si shall shine on all deservers from hence to in Verness and bind us further to you. Be myself the harbinger and make joyful the hearing of my wife with your approach. So humbly take my leave. My worthy Cawdor. Prince of Cumberland. <laughs> that is a step on which I must fall down or err or leap. For in my way it lies. Stars hide your fires. But not my light see my black and dark desires. True, worthy Banquo, he is full so valiant and in commendations I am fed. It is a banquet to me, let's after him, whose care is gone before to bid us welcome. Act one, scene five. Enter Lady Macbeth alone with a letter. <laughs> They met me in the day of success, and I've learned by the perfectest report, they have more in them than mortal knowledge. When I burned in desire to question them further, they made themselves air into which they vanished. Whilst I stood wrapped in the wonder of it came missives from the king who all hailed me. Thane of God. By which title before these weird sisters saluted me and referred me to the coming of the time with hail. King, thou shalt be. This have I thought good to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness, that thou mightst not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness is promised to thee. Lay it to thy heart and farewell. Lambs thou art, and Cordor, and shalt be what thou art promised. Uh, yet I do fear thy nature is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. 
Thou wouldst be great, art not without ambition, but without the ill myths should attend it. Hie thee hither, that I may pour my spirits into thine ear and chastise with thy valor of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round which fate and metaphysical aid doth theme to have thee crowned with all. <clears throat> what is thy tidings? The king comes here tonight. <laughs> Thou art mad to say it. Is not thy master with him who, were it so, would have informed me for preparation? So please you, it is true. Our thane is coming. Give him tending. He brings great news. <laughs> The raven himself is horse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. <laughs> Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts. Unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood. Stop the excess and passage to remorse that no compunctuous visitings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. You murdering ministers, wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief, come, thick night, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. <laughs> Great glams, worthy cawdor, greater than both by the all hail hereafter. The letters have transported me beyond the ignorant presence, and I feel now the future in an instant. My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. <laughs> oh, never shall that sun that morrow see. <clears throat> Your face, my thane, is a book where men may read strange matters. To beguile the time, look like the time. Bear welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for, and you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch. We will speak further. Only look up clear. To all to favor ever is to fear. Leave all the rest to me. Act one, scene six. Enter King, Malcolm, Banquo, Ross, and attendants. This castle, this castle hath a pleasant seat. The air nimbly and sweetly recommends itself unto the gentle senses. Oh, the heaven's breath smells wooingly here. The air is delicate. See, our honored hostess, <laughs> the love that follows us sometimes is our trouble, oh. which still we think as love. Heron, I teach you how you shall bid God is to us your pains yeah. and thank us for your trouble. All of our service in every point twice done and then double, double done. We're poor and single business to contend against those honors deep and broad wherewith your majesty loads our house. Give me your hand. Conducting to mine host, 
We love him highly and shall continue our graces towards him. By your leave, hostess. <laughs> Act one, scene seven, enter Macbeth. If it were done, when tis done, then twere well, it were done quickly. If the assassination could trample up the consequence and catch with his surcease success, that but this blow might be the be all and end all here. We, we still have judgment here that we but teach bloody instruction, which being taught return to plague the investor. He's here in double trust. First, as I, his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed, then as his host, who should against his murderers shut the door, not bear the knife himself. Besides, this Duncan hath for his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his great office that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off that tears, tears shall drown the wind. I have no spur to put the sides of my intent, but only bulging ambition, which o'erleaps itself and falls on the other. <clears throat> Oh, how now, what news? He has almost supped. Why have you left the chamber? We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which would be worn now in their newest gloss, not cast aside so soon. <laughs> Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Have it slept since? and wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely. Art thou afeard, and live a coward in thine own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon I would, like the poor cat in the adage. Pretty peace. I dare do all that may become a man. Who dares do more is none. <sighs> what beast was it then that made you break this enterprise to me. When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. Nor time nor place did then adhere, yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and that the fitness now doth unmake you. I have given a suck and know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from the boneless gums and dashed the brains out, had I so sworn to you as you have done to this. If we should fail. Oh, we fail? Oh, but screw your courage to the sticking place and will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, where to the rather shall his day's hard journey soundly invite him, his two chamberlains, will I with wine and wassail so convince that memory, the warder of the brain shall be but a fume when in a swinish sleep the drenched natures lie as in a death. What cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not put upon his spongy officers who shall bear the guilt of our great quell? <laughs> Bring forth men, children only, for thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. <laughs> Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber and used their very daggers that they have done it? Who dares receive it other, as we shall make our griefs and clamor roar upon his death? <laughs> <laughs> I am settled and bent up, each corporal agent to this terrible feat. Away, and mock the time that fairest show false face must hide but my false <laughs> heart doth know. Act 
Act to scene one, enter Banquo and Fleance, his young son with a torch. The moon is down. I have not heard the clock. A heavy summons lies like lead upon me, and yet I would not sleep. Merciful powers restrain in me the cursed thoughts that nature gives way to in rapports. <sighs> Give me my sword. Who's there? A friend. What, sir? Not yet at rest? The king's abed. He hath been an unusual pleasure, and this diamond he greets your wife withal by the name of most kind hostess content. I dreamt last night of the three weird sisters. To you, they have shown some truth. I think not of them. Yet, when we can entreat an hour to serve, we should spend it on some words upon that business if you would grant the time. At your kindest leisure. Shall cleave to my consent when tis shall make honor for you. So I lose none in seeking to augment it, but still keep my bosom franchised and allegiance clear. I shall be counseled. We'll propose the while. Thanks, sir, and the likes to you. Is this a dagger I see before me? handled towards my hand. Come, let me clutch it. Have thee not. And yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind? A false creation. I see thee yet. In form as palpable as that which I now draw. And such an instrument I was to use. And on thy blade, dirging gouts of blood, which was not so before. There's no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. Nor o'er half the world, nature seems dead, and wicked dreams abuse this curtained sleep. Thou sure and firm set earth, fear not my steps, which way they walk for fear thy very stones prat of my whereabouts and and take the present horror from the time which now suits it how i threat he lives <laughs> words to the heat of deeds too cold breath brings i go it is done the bell invites me Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. Act two, scene two. Enter Lady Macbeth. <laughs> <sighs> that which hath made them drunk hath made me bold. What hath quenched them hath given me Was the owl that shrieked, <laughs> the fatal bellman which gives the sternest good night. He is about it. The doors are open and the servitude grooms do mock their charge with snores. I have drugged their possets that death and nature do contend about them whether they live or die. <laughs> Who's there, what ho? Pray they have awaked and it is not done. The attempt and not the deed confounds us. Hark! I laid the daggers ready, he could not miss them. Had, had he not resembled my father as he slept, I had done it. Oh, my husband. <gasps> I have done the deed. <laughs> Didst thou not hear the noise? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Did you not speak? When? Now. 
as I descended. I... Uh, it's a, this is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. Oh, there's one did laugh in his sleep and one cried murder. One cried bless us and amen, amen the other as they had seen me in their hangman's hands. Listening their fear, I could not say amen when they did say God bless us. Consider it not so deeply. But when for could I not pronounce amen? I had most need of blessing and amen stuck in my throat. These deeds must not be thought after these ways, so it will make us mad. Me thought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more, Macbeth, does murder sleep the innocent, innocent sleep, Chair, chief nurturer in life's feast. What do you mean? Glomps hath murdered sleep, therefore Cawdor shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Ah, you do unbend your noble strength to think so brain sickly of things. Go, get some water and wash this filthy witness from your hand. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They, they must lie there. Go, carry them and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I am afraid to think what I have done. Look on it again, I dare not. Oh, firm of purpose. Give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are but pictures. Tis the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. Oh, he do bleed. I'll gild the faces of the grooms with all, for it must seem their guilt. Whence is that knocking? How is it with me that when every noise appalls me, my hands are here. Ah, they pluck out my eyes. Oh, will all great Neptune ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? No! This my hand will rather the multitudinous seas incarnadine make the green one red. <sighs> Hands are of your color, but I shame to wear a heart so white. I hear a knocking at the south entry. Retire we to our chamber. A little water clears us of this deed. How easy is it then? Your constancy has left you unattended. Hark. Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. I, to know my deeds, were best not know myself. Wake, Duncan, with thy knocking, I wit thou couldst. Act two, scene three. Enter Satan, obviously still drunk from the previous night, knocking within. There's a knocking, indeed, oh. If a man were porter of hell, he should have old turning the key. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there? In the name of Beelzebub. Oh, come in time. Have napkins enough about you. Here, you'll sweat for it. <clears throat> knock, knock. Who's there in the other devil's name? Oh, never in quiet. Knock, knock. Who's there? <laughs> what are you? Oh, 
but <laughs> this place is too cold for hell. I'll devil porter it no more. <sighs> Anon, Anon. Oh. I pray you remember the porter. Was it so late, friend, ere you went to bed that you do lie so late? Oh, Faith, sir, we were carousing till the second cock. And drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. What three things does drink especially provoke? Oh, Mary, sir, nose painting, sleep, oh, and urine. Oh, lechery, sir, it provokes and unprovokes. It provokes the desire, but oh, it takes away the performance. It makes him and it mars him, equivocates him in a sleep and giving him the lie. Ooh. Oh, oh, leaves him. <laughs> I believe drink gave thee the lie last night. Is thy master stirring? Our knocking has awakened him. Here he comes. Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow, both. Is the king stirring, worthy fane? Not yet. He did command me to call on him timely on him. I have almost slipped the hour. I'll bring you to him. I know this is a joyful trouble to you, but yet tis one. <laughs> the labor we delight in physics pain. This is the door. I'll make so bold to call, for tis my limited service. Goes the hing king hence today. Uh, he does. He did appoint so. The night has been unruly. Where we lay, lamentings heard in the air, strange screams of death clamored the live long night. Some say the earth was feverous and did shake. Twas a rough night. My young remembrance cannot parallel a fellow to it. <sighs> oh, oh, horror, horror! Tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor thy name. What's the matter? Confusion not hath made his masterpiece. Most sacrilegious murder hath broke up the Lord's anointed temple and stove fence the life of the building. Uh, what, what is it you say, the life? Mean you his majesty. Approach the chamber and destroy your sight. Awake, awake, ring the alarm bell. Murder and treason, Banquo and Malcolm, shake off thy downy sleep as from your graves. Rise up and walk like sprites to continuance this horror. Ring the bell. Uh, uh, what's this business that such a hideous trump is? Calls to parlay the sleepers of the house. Speak, speak. Uh, oh, gentle lady, tis, tis not for you to hear what I speak. Oh, Banquo, Banquo, our loyal master's murdered. Well, alas, what in our house? Who cruel anywhere? Dear Duff, I prithee contradict thyself and say it is not so. Had I but died an hour before the chance, I had lived in a blessed time. From this instant, there's nothing serious in mortality. All is but toys. Renown and grace is dead. What is amiss? You are, and you do not know it. Your royal father's murdered. Oh, by whom? Those of his chamber, as it seemed, had done. Uh, their hands and faces were all badged with blood. So were their daggers, which unwiped we found upon their pillows. They stared and were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. Yet I do repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you do so? The, expectation, the expedition of my violent love or run the pause or reason. Here lay Duncan, and his gash stabs look 
like a breath in nature for ruin's wasteful entrance. There the murderers, their daggers breached with gore. Who could refrain that had a heart to love and in that heart courage to make his loves known? My hands. <sighs> Look to the lady. Why do I hold my tongue? when most may claim this argument for mine, which should be spoken here where my fate, hid in an auger hold, may rush and seize me. I must away, my tears are not yet brewed. And when we have our naked frailties hid, that suffer and exposure, let us meet and question this most bloody piece of work to know it further. Fears and scruples shake us against the undivulged pretense I fight of treasonous malice. And so do I. So all. Let's briefly put on manly readiness and meet in the hall together. What must I do? I'll not consort with them. To show an unfelt sorrow is an office which the false man does easy, I'll go to England. There's daggers in men's smiles, the near in blood, the nearer bloody. This murderous shaft that's shot hath not yet lighted and my safest way is to avoid the aim. Therefore to horse and let me not be dainty of leave taking but shift away. There's warrant in that theft, which steals itself where there's no mercy left. Act two, scene four, enter Ross. Within the volume of my life, I have seen hours dreadful and things strange, but this sore night hath trifled former knowings. Tis unnatural. It's night's predominance or the day's shame that darkness does the face of earth's entomb when living light should kiss it. Is it known who did this more than the bloody deed? Those that Macbeth did slain. Alas, the day. What good could they pretend? They were suborned. Malcolm the king's son and his only heir is stole away and fled, which puts upon him suspicion of the deed. Against nature still, thriftless ambition that will raven up thine own life's means. Then tis most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He is already named and gone to scone to be invested. Will you to scone? No, cousin, I'll to fight. Well, I will thither. Well, may you see things all done there. Adieu, and let our noble robes sit easier that are new. God's benison go with you and with those that would make good of bad and friends of foes. Act three, scene one, enter Banquo. Thou hast it now, King Godor, Glamis all. As the weird women promised, and I fear thou pledged most fully for it. Yet it was said it should not stand in thy posterity, but that my shelf, myself, should be the root and father of many kings. If there come truth from them, why, by the verities of thee made it good, may they not be my oracles as well? and set me up in hope, but hush no more. Ah, here's our chief guest. <laughs> if he had been forgotten, it had been a gap in our great feast and all thing unbecoming. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and I'll request your presence. Let your highness command upon me to the which my duties are with a most indissoluble tie forever knit. Ride you this afternoon? I, my good lord. We should have else desired your good advice in this day's council, but we'll take 
tomorrow. Uh, fail not our feast. My lady, I will not. We hear our bloody cousin is bestowed to England, not confessing his cruel parricide, but of that tomorrow. Hie you to horse. Adieu till your return at night. Ghostly arms with you? Aye, my good lord, our time does call upon us. I wish your horse is swift and sure of foot. Let every man be master of his time till supper time. He thus is nothing, but to be safely thus. Our fears in Banquo stick deep in his royalty of nature, reigns that which would be feared, till much he dares. And to the dauntless temper of his mind, he hath a wisdom that doth gild his valor to act in safety. There is none but he whose being I do fear, and under him my genius is rebuked. As it is said, Mark Anthony was by Caesar. His ch he chide the sisters. When first they put name of king upon me, he bade them speak to him, and then prophet-like, they held him father to a line of kings, no son of mine succeeding. If it be so, for Banquo's issue have I filed to my mind who's, who's there? Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was, so please your highness. Know you then that it was he in the times past which held you under fortune, which you thought had been our innocent self. This I made good to you in our last uh, conference, passed in probation with you, how you were born in hand, how crossed the instruments who wrought with them, all things else that might say thus did Banquo. You made it known to us. I did so and went further, which is now our point of second meeting. Do you find your patience so predominant in your nature to pray for this good man for his issue with heavy hand hath, hath bowed you to the grave and beggared yours forever? I am one, my liege whom the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed that I'm reckless what I do to spite the world. And I another, so weary with disasters, tugged with fortune, that I would set my life on any chance to mend it or be ridden it. Banquo was your enemy, so he is mine. And every minute of his being thrust against my nearest of life. And though I could, with bare face power, sweep him from my sight for certain friends that are both his and mine, whose loves I may not drop, but wail his fall, who I myself struck down. And thence it is that to your assistance I do make love, masking the business from common eye for sundry weighty reasons. <laughs> we shall, my lord, perform what you command us. Your spirits shine through you within this hour at most. I will advise you where to plant yourselves. Pleonce, his son, that keeps him company, whose abeyance is no less material to me than his father's, must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart. We are resolved, my lord. I call upon you straight. Abide with him. It is concluded, Banquo, thy soul's flight, but find heaven, Let's find it out tonight. Act three, scene three, enter Lady Macbeth. Knots had all spent, where our desires got without content. Tis safer to be that which we destroy than by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. How now, my lord? Why do you keep alone? 
our sorry fancies, your companions making, using those thoughts which should have indeed have died with them they think on. Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. We have scorched the snake, not killed it. But let the frame of things disjoint, both the world suffer. Ere we will eat our meat in fear and sleep in the affliction of these terrible dreams that shake us nightly. Better be with the dead than on torture of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy. Duncan is in the grave and he sleeps well. Come, gentle, my lord, sleek o'er your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial among your guests tonight. <laughs> so shall I, love. Mm. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Mm, you must leave this. Thou knowest that Banquo and his fleance lives. There's comfort yet, they're assailable. What's to be done? Mm. Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, till thou applaud the deed. Come, sealing night, scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day, thou marvelous at my words, but hold thee still. Things bad begun make strong themselves by ill. So pity. Go with me. Act three, scene three, enter three murderers. But who did bid thee join with us? Macbeth. He needs not our mistrust since he delivers our offices and what we have to do to the direction lost. Well then stand with us. Near approaches the subject of our watch. Hark, I hear horses. Give us light there, ho. A light, a light. Tis he. Stand to it. It will be a rain tonight. Let it come down. Oh, treachery. Fly, good Vleonte, fly, 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 thou miss revenge. There's but one down. The sun is fled. We have lost best half of our affair. Well, let's away and say how much is done. You know your degrees sit down at first and last the hearty welcome. Ourself will mingle with society and play the humble host. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends, for my heart speaks they are welcome. <laughs> Be large in mirth, anon, we'll drink a measure the table round. Ugh, there's blood upon thy face. Tis Banquo's then. Is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut. That I did for him. Thou art the best of the cut throats. Yet he's good that he did the like for Fleance. Most royal, sir. Fleance is escaped. Then comes my fit again. <sighs> Had else been perfect, but now I'm cabin cribbed confined bound into saucy bouts of fear i think was safe i my good lord safe in a ditch he bides with 20 trenched gashes on his head the least a death to nature thanks for that get gone tomorrow we'll hear ourselves again <laughs> my, my royal lord you do not Give the cheer. <sighs> ah, sweet remembrancer. <laughs> Here, had we now our country's honor root, where the graced person of our Banquo present, who I may rather challenge for unkindness than pity for mischance. His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. Pleased your highness to grace us with your royal company. Uh, 
the table's full. Here is a place reserved, sir. <gasps> what is that moves, your highness? Which of you have done this? Uh, what, my good lord? Thou canst not say I did it. Never shake thy gory locks at me. Gentlemen, rise. His highness is not well. Oh, this is a sit. Worthy friends. My lord is often thus, and hath been from his youth. I pray you keep seat. This fit is momentary. Upon a thought he will be well again. If much you note him, you shall offend him and extend his passion. Feed and regard him not. <laughs> Are you a man? I and a bold one. Uh, dare look on that which might appall the devil. Oh, proper stuff. This is the very painting of your fear. Why do you make such faces? When all's done, you look but on a stool. Prithee, see there. Behold, look. Lo, how say you? What? Quite unmanned in folly. <sighs> I stand here, I saw him. Oh, fie for shame. Blood hath been shed, murders have been performed, too terrible for the ear. The time has been that when the brains were out, the man would die. But there, it, it end. And now they rise again and, and push us from our stools. This more strange than such a murder is. Ah, uh, my noble lord, your noble friends do like you. <laughs> I do forget. <laughs> uh, do not use at me, my most worthy friends. I have a, a strange infirmity. Yeah. Which is, is nothing to those who know me. Come, love and health to all. Yes. <gasps> I drink to the general joy or the table and to my dear friend Banquo, who we miss would he were here. Our duties and the pledge. Yes. Avant and quit my sight. Thou have no speculation to those eyes. What dost glare with? Uh, think of this, uh, good peers, but as a thing of custom, tis no other, only it spoils the pleasure of the time. Unreal mockery hence! Why so being gone? Uh, <laughs> I am a man again. <sighs> Pray you all sit. Uh, sit you still. You have displaced the mirth, broke the good meeting, which with most admired disorder. Can such things be? And now I think you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks when mine is blanched with fear. What sights, my lord? I, I, I pray you speak not. He, he grows worse and worse. Questions enrage him at once. Good night. Good night and better health. Attend his majesty. A, a kind good night to all. It will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. What is the night? Almost at odds with morning, which is which. How sayest thou that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding? Did you send to him, sir? I hear it by the way, but I will send, I will tomorrow to the weird sisters. More shall they speak, for now I am bent to know by the worst means the worst for mine own good. Strange things I have in head that will to hand which must be acted ere they be scanned. You lack the season of all natures. <laughs> sleep. Come. Um, go to sleep. And strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. 
We are yet to be young indeed. Act three, scene five. Enter witches laughing wildly. <laughs> Which is worse, all we have done has been for a wayward son, spiteful and wrathful, who, as others do, love for his own ends, not for you. But make amends now. Get us gone. Meet us in the morning thither. He will come to know his destiny. I am for the air. This night I'll spend unto a fatal and dismal end. Great business must be wrought ere noon. Upon the corner of the moon, there hangs a vaporous drop profound. I'll catch it ere it come to ground. And that distilled by magic slights shall raise such artificial sprites as by the strength of their illusion shall draw him to his confusion. He shall spurn fate, scorn death, and bear his hopes above wisdom, grace, and fear. Oh, when we all know security is mortal's chiefest enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Things have been strangely born. The gracious Duncan was pitied of Macbeth. Mary, he was dead. And the right valiant Banquo walked too late, whom you may say, if it please you, Fleance killed. For Fleance fled. Men must not walk too late. Yet I say, Macbeth has borne all things well. But peace, for from broad words, and cause he failed, his present at the tyrant's feast, I hear Macduff lives in disgrace. The son of Duncan, from whom this tyrant holds the due of birth, lives in the English court and is received of the most pious Edward with such grace that the malevolence of fortune nothing takes from his high respect. Thither, Macduff is gone to pray that holy king upon his aid to wake Northumberland in warlike seaward, that by the help of these we may again give our tables meat, sleep to our nights, free from our feast and banquet's bloody knives, do faithful homage and receive free honors, all which we pine for now. And this report hath so exasperated Macbeth that he prepares for some attempt of war. Macduff may soon return to this, our suffering country uh, under a hand accursed. I'll send my prayers with him. Act four, scene one. Thunder, enter three witches. Round about the cauldron go, in the poison entrails throw. Sweltered venom, sleeping got, boil thou first in the charmed pot. Double, double, toil and trouble. Fire burn and cauldron Bubble. Eye of newt and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog. For a charm of powerful trouble, like a hell broth boil and bubble. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Finger of birth, strangled babe, ditch delivered by a drab, make the gruel thick and slab, and there too a tiger's children, forth the ingredients of our cauldron, double, double, toil and trouble, fire burning, cauldron bubble. And now, about the cauldron sing, enchanting all that you put in. <gasps> By the pricking of my thumb, something wicked this way comes. Open, locks, whoever knocks. How now, you secret black and midnight hags? What is it you do? A deed without a name. I conjure you by that which you profess. 
ere you come to know it. Answer me to what I ask you. Speak. Mend. Will answer. Tell me, thou unknown power. Macbeth! 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 Beware, Macduff. Where art, where'er thou art, for thy good caution, thanks. Thou hast harped my fear all right, but one word more. We will not be commanded. Here's another more potent than the first. Macbeth, 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 be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man, for none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. <laughs> then live, Macduff, what need I fear of thee? But yet I'll make assurance double sure and take a bond of faith thou shall not live. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Macbeth shall never vanquished be until great Burnham. Would to high Dunnan Hill shall come against him. Will never be. My heart throbs to know one thing. Tell me if art tells so much. Shall Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more. I will be satisfied. Deny me this and an eternal curse fall on you. Let me know. Show. 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 Show his eyes and grief in his heart. Come, like, like shadows. Show. A show of eight kings parades and Banquo last who stares at Macbeth, then exits. Art too like the spirit of Banquo down. Th 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 thy crown just sear my eyeballs. Filthy hags, why do you show me this? I'll see no more. Horrible sight. Now I see tis true. <laughs> For the bloody bolstered Banquo smiles upon me and points at them for him. What is it so? I, sir, all this is so. But why stands Macbeth thus amazedly? <laughs> Where are they gone? Let this pernicious hour stand, I accursed in the calendar. Come in, whoever's there. What's your will, Grace? Saw you the weird sisters? Came they not by you? No, indeed, my lord. Who was it came by? Tis two or three, my lord, that bring you word Macduff is fled to England. Fled to England? Aye, my good lord. <sighs> Time thou anticipated my dread exploits. The castle of Macduff I will surprise. Seize upon Fife, give to the edge of the sword, his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that traced him in his line, no bolsting like a fool. This deed I'll do before this purpose cool. Act four, scene two, enter Lady Macduff, her son, baby girl, and Ross. What had he done to make him fly the land? You must have patience, madam. He had none. His flight was madness. When our actions do not, our fears do make us traitors. You know not whether it was his wisdom or his fear. <sighs> wisdom? To leave his wife? To leave his babes? His mansion and his titles in a place from whence himself does fly? He loves us not. All is the fear and nothing is the love. As little is the wisdom where the flight so runs against all with reason. My dearest cuz, I pray you school yourself, but for your husband, he is noble, wise, judicious, and best knows the fits of the season. I dare not speak much further, 
But cruel are the times when we are traitors and do not know ourselves. When we hold rumor from what we fear, yet know not what we fear. Things that the worst will cease or else climb upward to what they were before. My pretty cousin, blessing upon you. Father, he is, and yet he's fatherless. I am so much a fool, should I stay longer. It would be my disgrace and your discomfort. I take my leave at once. Sarah, your father's dead. And what will you do now? How will you live? Spurs, dear mother. What, with worms and flies? With what I get, I mean, and so do they. The father is not dead, for all you're saying. Yes, he is dead. How wilt thou do for a father? Nay, how will you do for a husband? Oh, why, I can buy me 20 at any market. And you'll buy him to sell him again. Thy thou speakest with all thy wit, and yet in faith with wit enough for thee. Is my father a traitor, mother? Aye, that he was. What is a traitor? One that swears and lies. And be all traitors that do so. Everyone that does so is a traitor and must be hanged. Must they all be hanged that swear and lie? Everyone. You must hang them. <laughs> the honest men. The liars and the swearers are fools. There are liars and swearers enough to beat the honest men and hang up them. Now, God help thee, poor monkey. <laughs> but how wilt thou do for a father? If he were dead, you'd weep for him. If he would not, it were a good sign that I should quickly have a new father. Bless you, fair dame. I am not to you known. If you will take a homely man's advice, be not found here. Hence with your little ones. I doubt some danger does approach you nearly. To frighten you thus, methinks I am too savage to do worse to you with fell cruelty. Oh, heaven preserve you. I dare no longer abide here. Whither should I fly? I have done no harm. But I remember now I am in this earthly world where to do harm is often laudable. To do good sometime accounted dangerous folly. Why then, alas, do I put up that womanly defense to say I have no done no harm? What are these faces? Some... Where is your husband? I hope in no place so unsanctified where such as thou always find him. He's a traitor. Thou liest, thou shag-haired villain! What, you egg? Young fry of treachery. <gasps> He's killed me, mother. Run away, I'll pray you. <laughs> Act four, scene three, enter Malcolm and Macduff. Let us seek out some desolate shade in there. Weep our sad bosoms empty. Let us rather hold fast the mortal sword and like 
good men bestride our downfall with withdrawn new sorrows strike heaven in the face that it that it resounds as if it felt with scotland and yelled out like a syllable of of dollar what i believe i'll wail this tyrant whose sole name blisters our tongues was once thought honest <laughs> you've loved him well he hath not touched you yet i am young but something you may deserve of him through me and wisdom to offer up a weak, poor, innocent lamb to appease an angry God. I am not treacherous. But Macbeth is. A good and virtuous nature may recoil in an imperial charge, <laughs> but I shall crave your pardon. That which you are, my thoughts cannot transpose Angels are bright still, though the brightest fell. I have lost my hopes. Perchance even there where I did find my doubts, let not my jealousies be your dishonors, but mine own safeties. You may, you may be rightly just, whatever I shall think. Bleed, bleed, poor country. I would not be the villain that thou thinkest for the whole space that, that's in this tyrant's grasp and the rich east to boot. Be not offended. I speak not as in absolute fear of you. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and each day a gash, when I shall tread upon the tyrant's head or swear it on my sword. Yet my poor country shall have more vices than it had before by him that shall succeed what should he be it is myself i mean and whom i know all the particulars of vice so grafted that when they shall be opened black macbeth will seem as pure as snow being compared with my confineless harms not in the legions of horrid hell can come a devil more damned and evil to top macbeth the cistern of my lust and of my desire, all continent impediments would overbear that did oppose my will better Macbeth than such an, that such an one to reign. Boundless interference in nature is a tyranny. It hath been the untimely emptying of happy throne and fall of many kings, but fear not to take upon you what is yours. You know thy royal father was a most sainted king. I put myself to thy direction and unspeak my own detraction here abjure. The taints and blames I laid upon myself and no time broke my faith would not betray the devil to his fellow and delight. No less in truth than life. What am I truly? It's thine and my poor countries to command. Now we'll together and the chance of goodness be like our warranted quarrel, tis hard to reconcile. My ever gentle cousin, come hither. What's the newest grief? Each minute teems a new one. When I came hither to transport the tidings, which I have heavily borne, there ran a rumor of many worthy fellows that were out, which was to my belief witnessed the rather for that I saw the tyrant's power afoot. Now is the time of help. Your eye in Scotland would create soldiers, make our women fight. We are coming thither. Gracious England hath lent us good sired and 10,000 men. What I could answer, this comfort with the like, but I have words that would be howled out in the desert air where hearing should not latch them. If, if it be mind, mine, keep it from me, keep it not from me. Quickly, let me have it. Let not your ears despise my tongue forever which shall possess them with the heaviest sound that ever yet they heard. Your castle is surprised. Your wife and babes savagely slaughtered. Merciful heaven, what man gives sorrow words? My children too? Wife, children, servants, all that could be found. My wife killed too? I have said. Be comforted. 
let's make us medicines of our great revenge to cure this deadly grief. He has no children! All my pretty ones in one fell swoop. Dispute it like a man. I shall do so, but first I must feel it like a man! I cannot but remember such things were that were most precious to me. Sinful Macduff, they were all struck for thee. Not that I am, not for their own demerits, but for mine. Be this the whetstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger. Blood not the heart enrage it. Oh, I could play the woman with mine eyes and brag it with my tongue, but gentle heaviness can short all intermission. But gentle heavens cut short all intermission front to front. Bring thou this friend of Scotland and myself within my sword's length. See him if he scape, heaven forgive him too. This tune goes manly. Come, go we to the king, our power is ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is ripe for shaking. Receive what cheer you may. The night is long that never finds the day. Act five, scene one. Enter a doctor of physic and a waiting gentlewoman. Doctor. Amanda, doctor. Where art thou, doctor? Oh. I perhaps did not notice that this was a scene that I was in. I <laughs> two nights watched with you, but can perceive no truth in your report. When was it she last walked? Since his majesty went into the field, I have seen her rise from her bed, throw her nightgown upon her, her unlock her closet, take forth paper, fold it, write upon, read it, afterwards seal it, and again return to bed. Yet all this while in a most fast asleep. Hmm. A great perturb perturbation in nature to receive at once the benefit of sleep and do the effects of watching. Uh, what at any time have you heard her say? That, sir, which I will not report after her. You may to me, and tis most meet you should. Neither to you nor anyone, having no witness to confirm my speech. Lo, you, here she comes. This is her very guise, and upon my life, fast asleep. Observe her, stand close. You see her eyes are open. Aye, but, but their sense are shut. What <coughs> she does now? Look how she rubs her hands. It, it, it is an accustomed action with her to seem thus washing her hands. I have known her to continue in this a quarter of an hour. Yes. He is a spot. Hark, she speaks. Out! Damn it, spot! Out! I see! Oh, one, two, why, then it is time to do it. Hell is murky. <laughs> fie, my lord, fie, a soldier and a feared. What need we fear? <laughs> So much blood in him. You mark that. Saying oh, a wife had a wife. Where is she now? What? Will these hands never be clean? No. More of that, my lord. No more of that. You mar all with that starting. 
Go to, go to. You have known what you should not. She has spoke what she should not. I am sure of that. Oh, heaven knows what she has known. Is the smell of blood still? <laughs> All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. <laughs> this disease is beyond my practice. Wash your hands, put on your nightgown, look not so pale. I tell you yet again, Banquo's buried. He cannot come out of his even so. To bed. To bed. There's a knocking at the gate. Come, 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 come. Give me your hand. What's done cannot be undone. To bed. To bed. To bed. <laughs> Will she go now to bed? Directly. More needs she the divine than the physician. God, God forgive us all. Look after her. My mind, she has made it and made in my sight. I think I dare not speak. Act five, scene two, drum and colors, enter Ross. The English power is near, led on by Malcolm, his uncle Seward, and the good Macduff. Revenge is burning them, for their dear causes would to the bleeding and the grim alarm excite the mortified man. I have a file of all the gentry. There is Seward's son, and many unrough youths that even now protest their first of manhood. What does the tyrant? Great Dunsinane, he strongly fortifies. Some say he's mad. Others that lesser hate him do call it a valiant fury. But for certain, he cannot buckle his distempered cause within the belt of rule. Now, does he feel his secret murder sticking on his hands? Those he commands move only in command, nothing in love. Now, does he feel his title hang loose about him like a giant's robe upon a dwarfish, dwarfish thief? Well, march we on to give obedience where tis truly owed to do the sovereign flower and to drown the weeds. Make we our march towards Burnham. Act five, scene three. Enter Macbeth, Doctor, and Satan. Bring me no more reports. Let them fly all. Till Burnham one removed to Dunsinay, I cannot taint with fear. What's the boy Malcolm? Was he not born of woman? <laughs> the spirits that I know, all mortal consequence have pronounced me thus. Fear not, Macbeth, no man that's born of woman shall e'er have power upon thee. Then, lie false thanes, and mingle with English epicures. <laughs> Where, God, it's that goose look. There is 10,000. Geese, villain? Soldiers, sir. Go prick thy face, and o'er red thy fear, thou liby-livered boy. What soldiers, Patch? The English force, so please you. I have lived long enough. My way of life is fallen into Sarah, the yellow leaf, and that which should accompany old age, I must not look to have. All is confirmed. I'll fight till my bones, my flesh be hacked. Give me my armor. Tis not needed yet. Send out more horses, scur the country round, hang those that talk of fear. Give me mine armor. How does your patient, doctor? Not so sick, my lord, as she is troubled with 
thick coming fancies that keep her from rest. Cure her then! As she is troubled with a thick... Canst thou not minister to the mind disease, pluck from the memory a rooted sorrow which weighs upon the heart? Therein the patient must minister to himself. Physic to the dogs. I'll none of it. Come, sir, dispatch. If thou couldst, doctor, cast the water of my land, find her disease, and purge it to a sound and pristine health, I would applaud thee the very echo. Satan, send out. Come, put mine armor on. I will not be afraid of death and bane till Burnham Wood come to Dunsinane. Were I from Dunsany in a way and clear, profit again should hardly draw me here. Act five, scene four. Drum and colors. Enter Malcolm, Seward, Macduff, Ross, and soldiers marching. Cousins, I hope the days are near at hand. The chambers will be safe. We doubt it nothing. What wood is this before us? The wood of Burnham. Let every soldier hew him down a bow and bear it before him. Thereby shall we shadow the numbers of our host and make discovery error in report of us. It shall be done. We learn no other but the confident tyrant keeps still in Dunsinane and will endure our setting down before it. Tis his main hope. For where there is advantage to be given, both more and less have given him the revolt, and none serve with him but constrained things whose hearts are absent to. Let our just censors attend a true event, and we put on industrious soldiership. The time approaches that will with due decision make us know what we shall say we have and what we owe, toward which Advance to war. Act five, scene five, enter Macbeth, Satan, and soldiers. Hang our banners on the outward walls. And the cry is still. They come, our castle's strength. will laugh a siege to scorn. Here, let them lie till famine and ague eat them up and beat them backward home. Wherefore was that cry? It is the cry of women, my good lord. <laughs> I had almost forgot the taste of fears. The time had been my senses would have cooled it to hear a night shriek and my fell of hair would yeah, I know, dismal treatise rouse and stir yeah. as life were in it. I have supped full with horrors. Dire is familiar to my slaughterous thoughts. That once start me. Wherever was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. Oh. She should have died hereafter. It would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow creeps in its petty pace. Away to dusty death, out, out, brief candle. Life's the walking shadow, a poor player who struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying Gracious my lord, I should report that which I say I saw, but I know not how to do it. You say, sir. I looked toward Burnham, and anon methought the wood began to move. Liar and slave! Let me endure your wrath, if it not be so, I say, a moving grove. 
if thou speak'st false, upon the next tree shalt thou hang alive. I put in resolution and begin to doubt the equivocation of the fiend that lies like truth. Fear not till Burnham Wood do come to Dunsinay. And now a wood comes to Dunsinay. <laughs> arm, arm and out. I gain to be wary of the sun and wish the estate of the world were not undone. Act five, scene six, drum and colors. Enter Malcolm, Seward, Seward's son, Macduff and their army. Now show like those you are, you worthy uncle, shall with my cousin, your right noble son, lead our first battle. Worthy Macduff and we shall take upon us what else remains to do according to our order. Fare you well. Do we but find the tyrant's power tonight, let us be beaten if we cannot fight. Make all our trumpets speak. Give them all breath, those clamorous harbingers of blood and death. Act five, scene seven, enter Macbeth, sounds of war. They have tied me to the stake and I cannot fly, but bear-like I must fight the course. What's he that was not born of woman? <laughs> Such a one I am I to fear or none. What is thy name? Thou be afraid to hear it. No, thou shalt callest thyself a hotter name than any is in hell. My name's Macbeth. The devil himself could not pronounce a title more hateful to mine ears. Nor more fearful. Thou liest a born tyrant with my sword. I'll prove the lie thou speakest. Ha! Oh, thou was born of woman. <laughs> That way the noise is tyrant show fly face. If thou beest slain with no more snake of mine, my wife's and children's ghosts will haunt me still. By the great cloud of one of the greatest snow seems brooded, let me find him. Fortune and more I beg not. Why should I play the Roman fool and die on mine own sword? Whilst I see lives, the gashes do better upon them. Turn, hell, how turn! Oh, of all the men I have avoided with thee. Get thee back. My soul is too charged with blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is in my sword, thou bloodiest villain! Let fall thy blade on vulnerable crests. I bear a charmed life that which must not yield to one of woman born. Despair thy charm, and let the angels whom thou still serves, that thou, Macduff, was so untimely ripped from his mother's robe. A curse be the tongue that tells me so. For it, for it hath, for it hath cowed me better part of a man. I'll not fight with thee. Then yield thee, coward. We'll have thee and narrow monsters are painted on the pole and under which here you see the tyrant. I will not yield to kiss the ground on young Malcolm's feet and be baited by the rabble's curse. I throw my warlike shield. Lay on Macduff and damn be him that first cries, hold enough. I would the friends we miss were safe arrived. Some must go off, and yet by these I see so great a day as this is cheaply bought. Macduff is missing, and your noble son. Your son, my lord, has paid a soldier's debt. He only lived but till he was a man, so like a man he died. Then he is dead. Aye, on the front. Why then, God's soldier be he. Had I as many sons as I have hairs, I would not wish them a fairer death. 
He's worth more sorrow, and that I'll spend for him. He's worth no more. They say he parted well and paid his score, and so God be with him. Here comes newer comfort. Hail, King of Scotland, for thou art. Behold, here stands the usurper's cursed head. The time is free. Hail, King of Scotland. Hail, King of All hail, King of Scotland. Hail, King of Scotland. We shall not spend a large expense of time before we reckon with your several loves and make us even with you, my veins and kinsmen. Henceforth be earls, the first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. What's more to do is calling home our exiled friends abroad that fled the snares of watchful tyranny of this dead butcher and his friend-like queen. Who, as tis thought by self and violent hands, took off her life, this and what needful else that calls upon us by the grace of grace. We will perform in measure time and place. So thanks to all at once, to each one whom we invite to see us crown at Scon. Hail, Hail, King, King of Scotland. Scotland. Hail, King of Scotland. <laughs> Hail. Hail. Hail.